It's hard to believe it's been that long, but it was on July 16th of 1951 that the teen angst classic Catcher in the Rye was published. You know, I love books. As you can see, I have all kinds of books here. I have great books here, books by C.S. Lewis and Friedrich Hayek. I have awful books here, books by Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. But I don't have a copy of Catcher in the Rye. I've never read it, and I'm certainly not going to read it now. Because to me, it's so trite, teen angst, a feeling that adults are hypocrites. Oh, come on. You can't still be going on about that, can you? Maybe this was new and fresh back in 1951. We were heading into, you know, the blackboard jungle and up the down staircase. But since then, we've had the 1960s. We've had the whole establishment revolt against the establishment. I'm not sure exactly what it is they're protesting against now. But young people today, the tragedy is their rebellion is so cookie cutter. It's so conformist. Their attitudes are so predictable, like their hair colors. You're dyeing your hair bright color. Oh, that's original. Yeah, at least it was back in 1938 when Louis Jordan recorded that song, You Dyed Your Hair Chartreuse. But by now, what could be more normal as a rite of teen passage than dyeing your hair a strange color? Now, getting a tattoo, getting a piercing, and joining the Occupy movement to protest against the injustices of capitalism, because you never hear an adult doing that. Back in January of 1999, there was a Doonesbury cartoon where Samantha was talking to Zonker and she's asking, gee, Uncle Zonk, do you think one day I could grow up to be a hippie like you? And Zonker says, I don't think so, Sam, because in order to rebel, you need an attacked establishment. And we haven't had one of those for years. You need an authority figure willing to take on the job. And she says, like who? And he says, I don't know, maybe Joe DiMaggio. And she says, do you think he'd take the job? Fact of the matter is, Joe DiMaggio died two months later. So by now, I, I just think it's so trite teen rebellion. I mean, don't forget that Catcher in the Rye became an instant bestseller and was immediately put on high school reading lists. If it was so nonconformist, how come it was accepted by the establishment so quickly? And yet we've all become like this giant Mel Gibson in conspiracy theory, compelled to buy a copy every time we see one, even though we know how it turns out. You know, there are all kinds of books you should read. Some of them are cliches, some of them are out of the way. But Catcher in the Rye is something you don't need to read because everybody's already done it and it wasn't worth doing. I mean, sure, yeah, I rebelled in my teens, but I don't look back on with pride on the attitudes I held in those days or the emotions or even the pictures, which I am not about to show you. If teens today want to read something genuinely rebellious, they should read The Rebel Cell by Joseph Heath and Andrew Potter, because that talks about how rebellion has been turned into a commodity. Once they read that, they'll have no choice but really to revolt, cut their hair, put on a tie, and get a real job making something useful, maybe even shock the bourgeoisie beyond measure, go to church.